but do we already run out of time so what i'm going to do this morning is i'm going to invite them on stage and we're going to focus on their lives for the next 30 minutes or so and then take q a so by 9 30 we're going to worship and then we're going to a more broader spectrum all right because sometimes knowing their story you know what i mean helps you to understand that they didn't arrive here overnight and that your own story is not peculiar am i making sense do you understand what i'm saying so i'm going to invite them on stage all right and then we're going to, I'm going to quickly give you an overview and then ask them some questions and then you can ask them questions about their lives and if you actually had listened to the the video we watched this morning it will also help you to position them as they relate to you because they've actually gone from each of those stages where they are now in stages where they're shaping other people's lives am i making sense and with that comes a great deal of responsibility what people don't understand is that the bible says those of us who are teachers are going to be judged at a higher level than others because we are actually telling people what to do with their lives and that takes a lot of responsibility. So without further ado, if I can ask some of them to come and move this pulpit out of the so of you can see them properly. And then we'll just invite them up stage. Let me get them microphones uh, so that they can. Please, can you come up? Let's, let's welcome them. Let's encourage them. Just carry this and put it in the corner there. Thanks. But please don't carry it from the top where it will just collapse. It's made in China, Nigeria. Praise the Lord. Made in China, sold in Nigeria. Just move it up to the corner there, the corner. Thank you. That's fine. Well, um, let me start off with... Uh, Steve has recently was uh, uh, interviewed by Forbes magazine as one of uh, Af- is it Africa's top 20 or so leaders, outstanding leaders in this country. I, I have the article here. Uh, so, but I, I would like to just, you know... Um, go back to his story. You know, I'd actually forgotten some of the things you had gone through until I read the, the article again. And I was like, really? Man, he's come a long way. Because I had this testimony from him that, I mean, in Ife, when I, that was the first time I met him. I went, to, there was a fellas pro program in Ife. Yes. And you were speaking. Yes. yes and, and that's how we met. And so let me start off with him. Because um, uh, I like Jimmy's one. Jimmy's been in HR for a long, long time. So he knows how to deal with human beings. So let's start off with Steve first. Most of you remember Steve came here shortly afterwards. You came to minister. I was yes. at Jesus Embassy, I yes. think. Or was it here? No, it was here. We've left that out. Um, but how do we bring that back? And how do we address these issues? All right. I was going to say, I mean, that for me, really, it's mentoring. And I remember uh, I'm growing up here in Ibadan. And um, I mean, I grew up in Ibadan, UI. And um, I joined the church then. Um, it's now called Harvest House Christian Center. Okay. Uh, it was then called Harvest International Church. Okay. And my first real mentor was Reverend Bimini Aboda. Okay. And the mentorship wasn't necessarily him sitting down and preaching. All of us had the same thing. But it was more in the moments where I was driving him in his car to Adoikiti to go and speak or to Laotech. And in those places, I had the privilege of observation, one, and then he gave me the privilege of correction and saying, no, you don't do that. And that's, I mean, related to what John Maxwell was saying, you know, that a lot of learning is not what I say, it's what I do. Yeah. Exactly. And then also you watching how I'm doing it yeah. and then 